Uh, hello. Uh, in this demo, we'll show how to use uh, Jenkins and uh, multiple Docker executors uh, to set up multiple slave environments where we can execute uh, different types of projects. So for this particular example, I have uh, a C project and a Java project, so which I'm going to execute in two separate Docker executors. So regarding my environment, I have a Ubuntu VM machine that is uh, running on top of my windows. Uh, so I'm running Docker master and slave uh, in the same VM. Uh, that's not f uh, you know, advisable for a production purpose. Uh, as a prerequisite, you ha uh, so we have to uh, uh, run a Jenkins container. So that is what I'm doing here. And uh, we have to have integration of Jenkins with Docker and uh, GitHub. So we can do that by uh, you know by manage plugins. Here we can install the necessary plugins. Uh, so assuming you have done that, so the next step would be to create the Docker slaves uh, for building the two projects here. Uh, so we already built this. So we'll just walk through what uh, what is the configuration here. The first slave I have created is a, a slave to build a C project. Uh, so this is my Docker URL. I'm exposing a Docker engine using you know, port 4243 here. And I have a Docker image, which is my Jenkins slave. Uh, so if you look at what is the Docker file associated with this, so this is my Docker file for the C project. So here we are installing whatever are the tools necessary to build uh, a, a C project. So here we have installed GCC and the make kind of tools. So from this Docker file, uh, we will create the Jenkins slave image which will build our C project. Uh, and uh, if we go into the next setting, so we have created a label here. This will be useful when we spawn build jobs. We will select the label on which the build job is supposed to run. Uh, then we put in the credentials and uh, the, the one part important part is like we have also mounted the volumes uh, so that uh, the binaries that are created uh, from the container, we copy it back to the uh, the host machine. So this is the uh, uh, the C uh, programming Docker slave uh, for building the C project. And then I have one more uh, Docker slave, which is Jenkins slave in Java. And here I have a separate uh, Docker image, my Jenkins project in Java. So if you look at the Docker file associated with that, so this is my Docker file for that. So here we have installed Maven and any other tools that are necessary to build the Java project. Uh, other than that, I have a different label for this Docker slave. So uh, that is another uh, configuration. And similarly, I have the volume I have mounted here. Okay, once we are done with this, we can save this. So this would, you know, set up the configuration part would be handled here. And then in terms of the, the project itself, so I've already created two projects. So let's look at, you know, the configuration within the project itself. So if we look at uh, the C project configuration, uh, the settings that we have, we are asking this project to be built as a container. And we are restricting this project to be run in the, uh, the label that we have created earlier when we created a Docker slave. And uh, we are asking this project source code to be picked up from uh, this particular repository. So this particular project is a simple project to, uh, you know, to list down the list of, you know, primary numbers. So uh, these are the two projects that I am uh, using for this, uh, you know, for, for this particular use case. One is this primes project. And uh, the another is this for, for the Java case, I'm using this game of life project. So these are projects that were available in the web. I just forked it uh, for my purpose here. Um, so, so this is basically the GitHub repository. And here uh, in terms of there are two options when we want to make a build. Uh, so in, in my case, I am pulling the GitHub repository for changes and for every five minutes I'm building it. Uh, the reason I'm doing it is I don't, my Jenkins is not exposed directly to the internet. But if your Jenkins is directly exposed to the internet, we can use a build trigger so that whenever there is a change pushed to GitHub, it will automatically trigger a Jenkins build. 
and uh, the last step is you know how do we build this particular project so i have used a build step with execute shell and i am you know listing down the steps in terms of configure make and the last step is you know copying this uh, binary to uh, the bin directory in the uh, container and because it is mounted to my bin directory in the host machine we should automatically see it uh, there and uh, i've already done one run of this particular project so we can look at the successful run here and if we look at the console output associated with the run uh, so we can see that you know it is uh, doing the uh, the autogen here it is doing the compilation here and at the end of it it's it's listing the it's copying the uh, binary to the bin directory and uh, this is the next project the java project the configuration is you know kind of would be similar uh, compared to the C project that we created, Ex uh, I'll show where the differences exist. Uh, so the main difference is in terms of the label expression here. So I'm choosing a different Docker slave, which will use a different Docker image to build this particular project. So here I've chosen a Java uh, Docker image, uh, and then here the GitHub repository I've chosen, you know, where the Java proje project resides and the build approach is pretty much the same as the C project and the last thing that is different here is in terms of you know how do we compile this project so I've used you know maven targets here and asked it to do a clean project and when, once the you know project is successfully built I'm asking it to copy the war file uh, to the bin directory and uh, so if you look at uh, the uh, the console log again I have already run this project once so if you look at uh, it's basically pulling the you know the necessary jar files here and at the end of it uh, so here we see that you know the project is built successfully and the war file is copied to the bin directory now if you look at the host machine itself so this is my host machine and I can see the two binaries this is from the Java project and from the C project you know successfully copy here and we can also see uh, that you know the container the slave container that is spawned has already been killed and this is my you know the Jenkins uh, log itself so here you know we, sh we could see the docker slave that gets terminated so basically every time we click off this build job uh, a docker slave would be spawned with the container we have specified the build would be run and then you know then the slave would be killed and that way we are you know we are back to a clean slate where we started. Uh, thanks for watching.